especially as we pray and call him in the nights of Qadr, inshallah. <clears throat> Before I get uh, back into the discussion that we started a few nights ago regarding the spiritual transformation or the spiritual leap, its possibility, and how we can achieve that if it is possible, or since it is possible, how we can achieve it. And specifically in terms of the Nights of Qadr, or the Night of Qadr being a night that things are destined in it, <clears throat> and destiny could change with the power and the might and the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how we can utilize the night of Qadr to change our situation to the best situation inshallah before I get back into that <coughs> there's a question that one of the youth asked me and um, I thought it would be very helpful for all of us to reflect on that question and um, perhaps it was it is in fact based on an ayah <clears throat> a debate happened between a Muslim speaker and uh, an atheist and um, it was on obviously proofs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Muslim speaker <clears throat> brought the ayah from Surah Al-Anbiya where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says do the non-believer not non-believers non <clears throat> do the non-believers not see how the heavens and the earth were together ratqan ratq is when something is uh, like a fabric that is well uh, uh, to get, uh, basically woven together strongly fatakhnahuma fatq is when you split, when you rip them apart when you split them from one another and then he says waj'alna min al-ma'i kullu shay'in hayy so the atheist said you're saying that these facts were unknown at the time and therefore quran is a miracle because uh, god says we created every living thing from water yet he mentions a name of uh, and a particular scholar or a particular scientist from uh, before islam before in fact uh, the before christ <clears throat> he gives a date and he says this scientist mentioned that uh, every living thing is from water therefore in his view he refuted uh, that uh, argument uh, number one he only looked at one aspect of that ayah <clears throat> the ayah has many scientific aspects in it. And there are many, many ayat. Today I <coughs> mentioned the ayah regarding the, uh, the uh, Dubab in Surah Al Hajj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He is giving you a parable, an example. <coughs> a, a simple fly. E even if everybody gets together to make a fly they will not be <coughs> able to make it and then if it takes away that from uh, anything from them in the <coughs> if a fly sits on your food and takes the particle that it takes can you get it back it is pretty pretty much impossible why even if we grab that fly, as soon as it took whatever it took, it became part of its, its digestive system. It is gone. <clears throat> you cannot get it back. Both the one seeking and the one who is seeked are weak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us many examples. This very scientific fact about this and many other ones. However, Quran is not limited to its scientific miracles. <clears throat> Quran is a miracle on many levels. Scientific miracles of the Quran, foretelling of the future of the Quran, 
the eloquence and balagha of the Quran, telling Ahlul Kitab of stories that they had kept to themselves that nobody had a clue of. All of these things are miracles of the Quran. And that same ayah in Surah Al Anbiya, <coughs> is not mentioned. If you say that the water was mentioned in previous uh, books or previous scientists, the fact that the heavens and the earth were together, nobody had mentioned, uh, mentioned that ever. <clears throat> In fact, it's something that, uh, if, if anybody said that perhaps a couple of hundred years ago, they would say this is a mad person to come to the point to say that everything was one, you know, our entire galaxy. <clears throat> and now we know that our earth is part of the sun. One day it used to be as part of it, and you know, this not just earth, the entire the uh, planets in the solar system. Now we know that the entire galaxy is expanding from one, or the entire universe is, is expanding from the original, and the <clears throat> suggestion of the Big Bang, how it happened. Some of the details of it, some parts are perhaps uh, based on evidence, some parts are still theory. Nonetheless, to come to, to uh, uh, that ayah, that part of the ayah, and that very ayah, I come back to that ayah about Dubab. Who would have, with that uh, microscopic technology, how would anybody be able to come and dissect a fly and realize how it works, how it digests, how it, how it uh, takes things when it does carry things and so on. <clears throat> Who would be able to do that? With that my microscopic technology or with that digital imaging and what we have today, how would anybody recognize and realize the stages of the embryo and all what it goes through that Quran references. So there are many, many references in the Holy Quran. This is one of them. And the fact that somebody before mentioned it doesn't make, make Quran any less of a miracle, especially since the Prophet, and this is one, one of the beauties of, in fact, uh, the uh, arguments that are used in the Quran, that he was not taught by anybody. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not taught by anybody. He was not a poet. He did not say poetry. He was not uh, taught by any teacher. He did not sit at any, uh, basically any uh, Jewish or Christian teacher because they knew of the history of the previous uh, uh, prophets and angels and the creation. <clears throat> so for him to come from uh, not studying and not being taught by anybody. And that's the meaning of Ummi. Ummi is not illiterate. Ummi is that he was not taught by anybody, but basically from his mother. The prophet to be uh, at that level of uh, not just, just literacy, science, and you know, uh, and history and geography and so many things that you see in the Holy Quran that has mesmerized uh, billions of people over the history of Islam and over the history of the Quran, Muslims and non-Muslims mesmerized and some uh, ignorant person, stubborn, and this is literally what it is, kufr is because they are, they lack in their gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the breath that they're taking, <coughs> the same breath that God has given him, yet he denies the creation, the water that he drinks that he's talking about is one of the miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will not be able to store it had it not been for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala circulating it through the hydrologic circle and so on. Back to our discussion that we started. We, just a brief summary of what we had discussed, we mentioned that, <coughs> that the uh, ability or the possibility of that leap 
is definitely there, especially in Laylatul Qadr. If it is possible, it is definitely most probable and most, uh, it is definitely uh, most likely to happen on the nights of Qadr. Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alf shahr. Then we, last night, in fact, I discussed the stage of self-building and self-development or personal development that all of us need to go through, in fact. And we do, to, to some degree, uh, consciously or subconsciously, we grow physically and we mature mentally. However, if we do it consciously, and we make a, a conscious effort that we're, uh, we want to grow spiritually, then there will be a big difference. And <clears throat> I'll uh, explain what I mean when I get to, that, to the planning aspect, inshallah. Last night I spoke about purification, then beautification. So if we want to build ourselves, uh, imagine you have... Uh, we've lived years of our lives, influenced by a society, influenced by people, parents, friends, environment, all sorts of things. And now we are who we are. In the spiritual journey, we want to travel. We want to go beyond where we are now, where, where I am today. Therefore, I need to somehow destroy or uh, clean my heart, destroy the idols that have been uh, created through the environment, through the, perhaps the materialist society that we're living in and so on. I need to destroy all of that. I need to clean the heart before I can start putting the beautiful uh, attributes and the beautiful characteristics that we learn from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through the Holy Quran and through his traditions and through Ahlul Bayt sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to reach to those levels that they had achieved, attained and they had reached, we need to make sure first <coughs> we purify and then we can uh, beautify. So to purify, purify from what? We say purify. In the first uh, third of the month as we began in this month of Ramadan, I spoke of the illnesses and diseases of the heart. If we reflect on those in order to purify from them, on a reflection level, because practical level, you could, you could say I cannot do all of it in one night. But at least theor theoretically, at least on a uh, on the level of the mind, intellectual level, reflection-wise, we do that. So I reflect on where I am, what I have, if I have these diseases, which ones of those diseases do I have? Reflect on uh, whether or not I have arrogance in me. Reflect on whether or not I have, uh, or what level of arrogance I would hesitate to say whether or not I would rather say what level of arrogance I have in me, what level of greed I have in me, what level of uh, perhaps hujb, <clears throat> being satisfied with or you know pleased with who I am and what I am, what level of riya showing off do I have in terms of my ibadat, in terms of my good deeds, in terms of my charities, do I care that people see it or do I prefer that people don't see it? Uh, what level of uh, perhaps uh, the uh, disease of hypocrisy being uh, basically the faith in the heart is pulling us into two directions, mudabdabin. The faith is pulling, the heart is pulling me towards faith and pulling me towards materialism <clears throat> towards dunya and towards akhirah the heart is stuck <clears throat> which is one of the reasons why in fact some end up having hypocrisy part of it is and this is description from the holy quran uh, 
So that level, that uh, reflection on those illnesses in order for us to be uh, beautify or purify from them. As I mentioned from Imam Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam, he says, سَيِّئَةٌ تَسُوُّكْ خَيْرٌ مِّنْ حَسَنَةٍ تُعْجِبُكْ Focus on the sayyat and that we have the illnesses, the diseases that we have, and be uh, sad, be upset about them, be disappointed with yourself, speak to yourself and <clears throat> have disappointment with yourself in that spiritual journey. That is better than uh, being uh, basically pleased and uh, happy and boasting about certain good deeds that we may uh, do, may have done or may do on the night even. Then I did mention another <coughs> level of purification, which has to do with the, uh, the, uh, our social interactions, our relationships with other people. In my relationship with other people, I need to make sure that I purify my heart. In order for me to achieve spirituality, to achieve uh, to be the guest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to deserve my dua to be answered, all of these things will not happen unless and until we have that soft heart, a soft heart that does not have grudges, that not, does not have ill feelings, and so on. <clears throat> There's an important point I want to mention. This is part of what we had discussed. However, <clears throat> a reminder that one of the remedies for many of the diseases of the heart, if not all of them, is to find righteous uh, friends, find the right uh, kind of companions and uh, companionship. That is a remedy for the diseases of the heart. On the night of Qadr, reflect not just reflect on the problems and illnesses but also reflect on the kind of companions we have the kind of environment i live in in order for us to make decisions on that very night that i want to have certain people eliminated from the list of my friends i can have <clears throat> you might say community members relatives you can keep your Salatul Rahim of relatives. You can keep your um, basically obligation towards you know, believers amongst the community or colleagues, friends at work, friends at university. You can keep your uh, dutifulness. It doesn't mean that you have to cut off with them. But do not consider them your friends and your companions that you want to spend time with and learn from one another and uh, basically uh, reflect uh, each other because that, that's what happens generally. Friends and companions who spend time together, they start talking like each other. I mentioned this to uh, some of the mu'minina, mu'minat who are getting married. They start, um, husband and wife living together for a long time, they start looking alike, not just talking alike, not just behaving alike. They almost start looking alike. <clears throat> Perhaps maybe the food that they eat together and so on. In any case, if we look at our friends, Amir al-Mu'minin he says they determine who you are. Therefore, on that night, part of the reflection as we are reflecting on purifying from diseases and illnesses, we need to also reflect on the kind of companionships, uh, companionship and friendship that we uh, friends that we may have, if we need to change some, if we need to choose better friends and so on, do it on the night. Now, in terms of the uh, and. Uh, just a last comment in terms of what we had discussed is regarding asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the right direction. And this is again very important, my dear brothers and sisters. I cannot ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me if I don't forgive. I cannot ask him to 
as we recite in dua, Ashba kulla ja'a if I don't care about feeding the hungry. Oh God, you go and feed all the hungry. Like the people of Musa, ala nabina wa alayhi wa alayhi salam, he said to them, you have to fight this uh, enemy. They said, you go with God and fight. We will sit here. They're not willing to stand up and struggle in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they want the fruits. You, I, I would like for the poor to be rich. And sometimes we dare question the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his distribution of wealth. Yet what we have, we're not willing to share. This is this itself. So if I want to expect certain purifications on the night of Qadr, I want to have, <clears throat> I want to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify me and grant me generosity. Forgive me and, uh, you know, be generous to me and so on. I have to be in the right direction. I have to have those uh, qualities. Then when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask with confidence. Ask knowing that he answers. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he says, when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not ask doubting that he is uh, the one who answers dua. And I mentioned that we need to uh, seek from the heart. Ask him from the bottom of the heart. Purify that heart so that we can ask him from the bottom, bottom of our heart. And make sure on the night of Qadr, so reflection, Part of it is prioritization. Put your, get your priorities right. In the nights of Qadr, don't focus on little things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the, the, the most generous. He is al-jawad. He has the beautiful names. Ask him big and get your priorities right. Ask as we learn from Ahlul Bayt. Imam Hussein alayhi salam, he says, I ask you one thing. If you, don't, if you give me this, nothing else that you do not give me or withhold from me will harm. And if you don't give me this one thing, nothing that you give me will benefit. What is it? In Dua Arafa, he says that you free me from hellfire. In other words, salvation. In other words, to be saved on the day of judgment from our own, uh, the consequences of our own actions, the fire that uh, we make for ourselves to be saved from that. And finally, when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask and try to shed tears. Try if you uh, do your best uh, to shed tears, soften the heart, and inshallah tears will come. Tonight, I want to fo focus on one action or one deed that we can do in the month of Ramadan in general, and specifically in Laylatul Qadr. We can do this, and it's one of the best a'mal in Laylatul Qadr, and one of the most helpful a'mal in order for us to purify, in order for us to have that spiritual leap, in order for our dua to be answered and removes all sorts of calamities that could be uh, decreed for us. This one deed, very, very powerful, very, very significant to the point that in Quran is put together with salat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran, he says, Aqimu salat. And then he says, Atu Zakat. Establish prayers and pay the Zakat. Zakat is <clears throat> when something grows, in fact. Yazku, Yanmu. It is used also for purification. Tazkiyat to nafs is about purifying the nafs. When it comes to mal, it's about purifying the wealth. But in reality, it's making it better, making it grow making it as uh, the term is used also for a delicious meal طيب. making it enjoyable one enjoys the uh, wealth when they purify it they it grows with zakat 
it is difficult to translate the term and say charity, but for the sake of, uh, of or the lack of a better word, we'll use charity. Charity in Laylatul Qadr or Zakat in Laylatul Qadr, one of the best amal, in fact. We look at this particular deed from different angles. The one thing that we know is Laylatul Qadr khayrun min al If one night is better than a thousand months, how many, how many nights would that be? Approximately 30,000. A month is about 30 days. Lunar months we're speaking here. So approximately 30,000 nights. So if one deed could equate to 30,000, Wallahu yudha'ifu yasha. Because this ayah does not say it's equal. It is better than, khayrun min. And alf is for a big number. They did not have the uh, million. If they wanted to say million, they would say alfa alf. Back in that time, they would use alfa alf for a million. In any case, alf being approximately about 30,000 multiplication here. If I give one in Laylatul Qad, whatever currency you want to assume, then that's 30,000. Give 10, give 100, give 1,000, out of a sudden you're in the millions figure. Wallahu yudha'ifu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiplies. This on a very basic level. However, you will ask me, what is, we're speaking about spiritual deed. You're speaking about how we can elevate spiritually. What does that have to do with charity? What does charity have to do with spirituality? Just because they may send, sound alike. <clears throat> My dear brothers and sisters, part of the spiritual journey that we're on is to detach. If we do not detach from dunya, we cannot ascend. If we are stuck in the material things of this world, we cannot ascend. We simply cannot. If we are so attached, we have examples as evil as Umar ibn Sa'ad <clears throat> What made him fail his test? Did he not know the Imam of his time? Did he not know that this is the man, the Prophet clearly said that he is Sayyid Shabab Ahl al-Jan? What made him fail? His lack of detachment. He was attached. أَأَتْرُكُمُ الْكُرَّيِّ وَالْرَّيُّ مُنْيَتِ Do I let go of the governorship of Ray, and I love it so much. Or do I face God with the blood of Hussein? And he knew that. And then he says, <clears throat> they say there is a day of judgment. Attachment to dunya led him to what? Questioning his Faith was now shaken to the point that he doubted the day of judgment. Yaquluna. They say there's a day of judgment. And if there is, then I will seek forgiveness. What seeking forgiveness after what you do? Will you have the chance or would the heart become so dark and so, so uh, rock hard, so hardened? that there's no more lessons, no more reminders that would work on it. And that's what happened with him. He destroyed his akhir. Lack of purification in, the, in terms of dunya and you know, wanting. The opposite of wanting to keep and wanting dunya is to give. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again and again <clears throat> in the Holy Quran, he reminds us of giving. 
Alladina yuqimuna salata. Beautiful in Alladina yu'minuna bil ghaybi. Surah Al-Baqarah. Who are the muttaqun? The first thing yu'minuna bil ghaybi. They believe in the unseen. Alladina yu'minuna bil ghaybi. Wa yuqimuna salata. And they establish prayers. What else? Faith. Prayers. Wa mimma razaqna hum yunfaqun. From what we gave them, they spend. They recognize that it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gave it to us. And he ordered us to make sure there is a share for the needy, for the poor. There is a share when it comes to certain uh, levels of income and uh, certain belongings. There's a, a specific zakat. Another one, there is the khums. فَإِنَّ لِلَّهِ خُمُسَهُ وَلِلْرَسُولِ وَلِذِ الْقُرْبَى وَلْيَتَامِعُ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ They know that وَفِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقٌ They know that there's a right in their wealth belonging to the one who is asking سَائِلِ وَالْمَحْرُونَ The one who begs and the one who doesn't have but doesn't beg. They know that these people have a right in their wealth. Whether it be the obligatory or above that, in fact, they know that and they spend, therefore, in order for us to complete our faith, in order for us to detach from dunya and ascend, in order for us to be able to have that spiritual leap, we need to give. This is what this is why it is so so important that in uh, part of our spiritual journey that we become giving. Generous. Laylatul Qadr. Ask, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want this. We, I want this. I want this. One of our great scholars, Shaheed Mutahari, he says, did we ever tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take? <clears throat> because the things that we should, he should take from us are more significant and important than things, the things we ask for. Now, he wasn't speaking of the wealth. Perhaps uh, speaking of the th the what uh, the Imam says, Allahumma khud li nafsi min nafsi ma yukhlisuha wa abqi li nafsi min nafsi. It's beautiful, ma yuslihuha. Oh Allah, take from my nafs, take from me, for your sake, for nearness to you. Take from me what grants me salvation, what frees me. So I'm not a seer. I don't want this hubbu dunya that makes me a captive, makes, makes me a prisoner. That if I don't get certain things, I become sad. If you lose, and Imam Zain al-Abidin he says, if you lose uh, dinar, or dirham, a dollar in our currency. If you lose a dollar, you are sad. But you, every day you lose days of your life. We don't reflect on what's the most important commodity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you days, days of your life. What for? To gain more wealth? Sustenance he guaranteed for you. What about qurb, nearness to him? What about Akhira, preparing for it? Isn't that what we say? Isn't that what we constantly read in the Quran? Akhira is better for you than this world, than this life. This is Nash'at al-Ula. Nash'at al-Akhira is the more important one. <clears throat> Quran reminds us. Ahadith reminds us. Yet, I need to detach. خُذْ لِنَفْسِكَ مِنْ نَفْسِكَ Free me, Ya Allah. Sayyidi, akhrij hubba dunya min qalbi. My Lord, take that love of dunya from my heart. It is keeping me as a, an asir, as a captive, a prisoner. I think that this is going to bring me this new car, new house, new whatever it may be in this material world, that these are the things that are going to bring me happiness. And then what? You get it, and then what? You want the next thing. You get that, and then one. You will never achieve happiness. Take that away from me so I am free. 
أخرج حب الدنيا من قلبي On the other hand if we get to that level where I, I can easily give if I don't have that greed if I can easily give if I become the type of person that enjoys giving that loves to have more so that they can give more then then keep him for myself from myself what is best for it what may, what reforms it what beautifies it again we're not saying that one should not have anything in this life no don't be a prisoner a captive of this dunya you are the owner not the dunya you can give this is the real rich the rich is the one who can give how because i'm connected to the rich al ghani the rich when you connect to him you can easily give in laylatul qadr one great exercise is not to just give but give generously i'll give you examples and you know what i mean by giving generously and it's all relative to each one's ability everyone's ability each one of us has a certain position certain situation financially and therefore they have certain abilities you judge it yourself based on your ability i'm not going to put numbers here because if i put a million i might be putting little for some it might be little if i put uh, perhaps a hundred for some it's a lot i am not going to put a number here you think yourself and assess it based on what i'm going to share with you a couple of examples inshallah from ahlul bayt sallallahu alaihi wasallam alayhi rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam he says man fattara sa'iman fi shahr ramadan من كسب حلال صلت عليه الملائكة ليالي شهر رمضان كلها وصافحه جبرائيل ليلة القدر. Amazing hadith. Whoever feeds someone who is fasting in the month of Ramadan from halal earnings, halal earnings, إن شاء الله. We strive to make sure our earnings are halal. If we, ha- if we have any doubts, doubtful earnings, any haram earnings, make decisions in this month that you want to change. If it means you have to get rid of a certain business, sell it with a loss. As long as you can survive. Survive how? Survive in terms of not putting yourself in extreme hardship. Do it in this month of Ramadan. If you are involved in haram business, if you are involved in doubtful business, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get, help you get out of a doubtful business or a doubtful income. He says, whoever feeds from halal, sallat alayhi al-mala'ikatu. Mala'ika. We'll do salat. We say, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Here, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Here, the malaika will do salat for him. Salat of malaika is istighfar. Every night in the month of Ramadan, they will do istighfar for him. And above that, Jibra'il will, Musafaha is when you, he shakes hands. That is a kind of congratulations kind of, uh, you know, telling him, well done. Jibra'il will do that for him on the night of Qadr. وَمَنْ صَافَحَهُ جِبْرَائِيلِ يَرَقُّ قَلْبُهُ وَتَكْثُرُ دُمُوهُ We wondered, how can I have tears in my dua? What softens my heart so I can have tears? In the, heart, in, in the nights of Qadr as I'm reciting my dua, 
it is to feed that hungry, feed that fasting person. Feed him from halal. Jibra'il will do musafaha, congratulates you. And whoever Jibra'il does the musafaha to, he says his heart will soften and his tears will become easy. He will have a lot of tears, tears of the answering of dua. These are tears of joy, inshallah. Imam Amir al Mu'minin, salawatullah wa salamu alayhi. In the riwayah, he used to feed the people in the month of Ramadan of the best food, and then he would, when they, when they are done, he would uh, address them with reminders and admonishments and so on. كان علي بن أبي طالب عليه السلام يغش يغش الناس يعش الناس في شهر رمضان باللحم ولا يتعشى معهم. He would feed them meat. He would not eat that for himself. He would not eat the same food that he's giving them because he's giving them the best here. This is what I want us to pay attention. Similar to the narration from the Muhammad صالح عليه السلام about the grandson of Imam Amir al-Mu'minin sallallahu alayhi wa none other than Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam, Ali ibn al-Hussain Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam. He says, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam narrates, he says that he, in the month of Ramadan, uh, specifically, in fact, he would be uh, in the nights of Qadr feeding the people. And when he would feed the people, what he would do, he would slaughter an animal, sacrifice, and then he would cook it. He would have people come, his uh, helpers, they would come and they would cook the animal, whatever it is, the sheep or uh, a camel, whatever he could do. And then he would come and inspect it and smell it. You know, I'll come to the smelling part and why. <clears throat> then, when it comes time for iftar, he would ask the people to come and he would start distributing to all those who are fasting, especially the needy ones amongst them, until it finishes. Then he would go and have his bread, bread and sometimes dates. <clears throat> and then the, when he would be asked, he would say, he would do that in the nights of the month of Ramadan and he would give sadaqat in the nights. He says, All of this, perhaps I would get the night of Qadr. I would get it done on the night of Qadr. Now we know that the Imams, clearly Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he says that we know Laylatul Qadr. Malaika come to us. The Imam is teaching you and I. In other words, in the month of Ramadan, especially as it comes to the last 10 days, be as generous as you can. <clears throat> Give, feed, help to the best of your ability. <clears throat> if you do it on the night of Qadr, if you do it con constantly in the last 10 nights, if you can, no 19, 21, 21st, uh, 21 and 23rd, do it to the best of your ability. Do give the best. This is the significant part. When one gives, they cannot give. I mentioned, I mentioned that clearly. We cannot give leftovers and give the uh, loose change that we normally do not keep and think that we are giving. <clears throat> that is not the real giving. One who gives, they give the best. لَن تَنَالُ الْبِرُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly says, you will not get, in Surah Al-Imran, you will not be able to achieve bir, righteousness. We're looking for righteousness. We want a cleaner heart. We want a better heart. We want a spiritual leap. We want a complete transformation. We want to be righteous. صالحين. أبرار. You want that? You will not get it. لَن تَنَالُ Until you give of that which you love. حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ مَا تُحِبُّونَ Not that you, 
you are willing to give give whatever it is that you basically uh, comes to uh, clothes we give the things that we don't like anymore food leftover food money the change that we can do with that that is not mimma tuhibun that that is not in fact anywhere near the description of we call ourselves shia if uh, one day inshallah i'll share a long hadith from Imam Baqar it is a shameful situation that situation that most of us are in. He says, you are not a Shia until the rich ones amongst you help the poor ones amongst you to the poor to the point that they suffice they need their needs. So you go and look at how Ahlul Bayt did it. We want to follow them. When somebody would come to them, they would give him in a way that he can go and he doesn't need to ask anyone else anymore. Imagine we remember Imam Hassan alayhi salam in the month in the middle of the month of Ramadan. A man comes to a family come to him because they were needy. They sold him a property, <clears throat> a house. They needed to sell it. They needed the money. So they sold it to him. He bought it. A very significant amount. Imagine, let's say 300,000, for, for half a million dollar house, whatever it is. If we look at it with the amount then and today, it is something of that nature. And then he heard, listen to this. He heard that they became needy. Somehow they took the money, they wanted to trade with it, they lost the money, whatever happened. He heard that they lost it and they were needy. So what did he do? He gave them the house back. How many of us do that? Somebody needs some cash and comes and sells you a car. And they go and buy a smaller car, for example. And then you have now, you, you know of their, their problems, of their needs. This is Ahlul Bayt, and these are examples that they've given us. You might say they have a lot. Well, as much as they had, they gave and gave and gave. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiplied for them. That's the beauty of it. Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi wa You know, giving charity doesn't just have the spiritual uh, effects. In dunya, we have a hadith about Dawu mardaqum bis sadaqah. Treat the ill ones with sadaqah. If you are unwell, treat it with sadaqah. You have problems, health problems. Treat it with sadaqah, subhanAllah. Who would think of it this way? That, you know, I get, well, ayadu billah, we get a disease. And the doctor says, you know what you need to do? You need to go and spend some money on some poor people. The sadaqah. Generously. I know people who tested this very well. And they didn't do it as a, as a test because believing is when it happens. They gave, in other words, first-hand experience. I, I know people who have I've seen it. They gave and they, they swear by giving to the orphan specifically. And they, they say it is 100% guaranteed it works. Difficulties, problems, uh, the, Diseases, issues, whatever. Dawu mardakum bis sadaqa. He says in another hadith, we are told that it is ziyadatun fi a'marikum wa hasanatikum. Prolongs life, increases hasanat, all these things that I have. Imam Amir al Mu'minin sallallahu wa sallam alayhi, he says, if you ever have, are in a situation of poverty, if you ever are in difficult situation financially, he says, then do a trade with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who, uh, who is the one who would give a loan to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? A loan with, with God, a transaction with God. He says, do transactions, do a trading with God, transaction with God. That you give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Besides the, you know, the journey of Barzakh, how it cools the grave, Sadaqat, uh, In Barzakh, the Qabr, some Ahmal brings, uh, Billah, heat and fire. Sadaqah puts it off. Dunya, relief. Akhira, relief. Spiritual journey, one of the best methods that we can detach and take that leap. You want to fly spiritually, you have to put off the weights. The more weights you have, the more you're going to be dragged down. If you really want to fly, put off those weights. Throw them. Get rid of them. You may say, how much? As long as you're not going to... Don't put yourself into extreme hardship. If it's not extreme hardship, give. Again, I'm not going to put the number. Laylatul Qadr. A young man, subhanAllah, a young man I know in this country who was working hard, early 20s, had some savings, thinking of buying a house or something. Then, in the month of Ramadan it was, and I still remember sitting with him on the table, we were discussing, and he's saying, you know, I'm trying different things and, uh, you know, this is not working. I said, I'm going to give you a tip. First of all, have you given the khums of that money? He said, um, no, but I thought I was saving for a house. I'm not sure if I'm exempt or not. And, if it's not specific, let's assume that it's not exempt. Would you become poor if you give your khums? He said, no. I said, okay. Then after that, would you like to give, make a transaction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Give what is due and make a transaction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, all I have is 25,000. That's all I have. So give your khums one-fifth. No problem. We worked it out based on the savings that he owed was about 5,000. Besides the new savings. No problem. I'll pay it. And what else are you going to do? Transaction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, well, I was thinking I needed this amount, specific amount, 16, I believe, that I needed to start something. And I will give. Other than that, I'll give. Gave generously. Subhanallah. In no time, his life transformed. And if I can say that a man is traveling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, despite difficulties in the environment that he is in, he is one of these men. Perhaps in a much better position than many of us, including myself. Laylatul Qadr, part of what you need to do, Mu'minina Mu'minat, and I don't want to keep you much longer. Part of what we all need to do is to sit and reflect. Part of it is how much can I put off in terms of weights? How much, do, how much am I able to put off in terms of weights so I can fly? And you'll see what happens. Obviously, when one has money due in their, uh, basically, wealth, homes and zakat due, that is the first that they need to give. Then the next thing after your homes and zakat, if you have relatives that are needy, that is the first thing that you give. Beyond your wajib, homes and zakat, when you want to give sadaqat, there's in fact a hadith that says there is no sadaqa for one whose relatives are needy. Rahim, you know, blood relatives are needy, they come first. You give your khums and zakat, that is owing, that is not yours, the wajib part. And then comes to the sadaqat, obviously you need to give the aqrabun, awla bil ma'ruf. Relatives, you need to do. 
But in Laylatul Qadr, think of how much you can give. And do this, uh, you know, basically do this transaction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say, Ya Allah, I am doing this. You have given me the wealth. You've given me whatever, whatever I have. I want to do something significant in Laylatul Qadr. I want to see something significant and have confidence. I want to see significant change in my life and have that confidence. Let us all do it. And I'll give you the last tip, inshallah. When you want to give beyond your wajib in Laylatul Qadr specifically, one of our great scholars, that his statement became uh, basically a lesson for all the scholars afterwards to teach all of us, to remind all of us in Laylatul Qadr, strengthen your connection with the Imam of the time, Ajalullah Ta'ala Faraj of Sharif. And part of that strengthening of the connection is give your sadaqat. You know, we give for the health and safety of our children, we give sadaqa for the health and safety of our sick ones, of our selves. We give sadaqat for well-being. Give for the well-being of the Imam of the time, Ajallah Ta'ala Faraj al-Sharif, in, the, in Laylatul Qadr. A strong connection, and this, according to our teachers and scholars, this would do miracles for us, inshallah. But you give in his name for his, for his safety, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you give what is worthy of giving. You give what you love, inshallah. And then we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us transform, to help us in that spiritual journey, to take the leap that we can and inshallah uh, will take with his, with his help, with his aid, inshallah, in Laylatul Qadr. Mu'minina, mu'minat, it is difficult times we are in. Uh, Alhamdulillah, the brothers, in terms of your religious obligation, khums and zakat, both even zakat al fitra, all of that will be, inshallah, available to do online. Uh, I believe on the website, perhaps after the uh, lecture, the brothers will explain or they could uh, share how you can uh, pay your uh, zakat, zakat al-fitra, which is an obligation, and so on, or your homes, those of, those of you who have their financial year in the month of Ramadan, or if you have not done it, then you start doing it, uh, perhaps purify it before Laylatul Qadr, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month of Ramadan and in the upcoming night of Qadr to make us amongst those who gain nearness to him through purification and ask him to beautify our hearts with his love and love of the things that he loves and loves of love of those whom he loves Ahlul Bayt Salawatullah we ask him to make us amongst those who listen to what's said